Hey guys, it's me, Natasha Lynn, and how are you guys doing today? So today, um, if you guys haven't already seen, the topic is how can I protect my hair? Um, not just when you're going swimming, but also in the heat as well. So today I have some wonderful tips that you might want to consider um, when you are swimming or if you are laying out in the sun. Um, and just, you know, this is just some information on how you guys can protect your hair during the summertime. So first, I'm just going to start out with um, protecting your hair uh, during the summertime in the heat. Uh, we definitely want to make sure your hair is moisturized, um, hydrated. Uh, I know, you know, people are still using grease, which grease is not a really bad thing or some of our thicker oils. Uh, during the summer months, this is the time where you want to kind of lay off some of the thicker, thick oils, okay? So just hear, hear me out first before you, you stone me. But the thicker oils, um, as you know, thicker oils do what when the heat hits it? They kind of start to fry almost, almost, okay? They almost kind of fry. So with the thicker oils, I, I just say kind of lay off some of those during the summer months because you don't want to fry your scalp. You don't want your hair to fry, especially if you're going to be laying out in the sun. So just kind of um, lay, you know, hold off on um, using so much. If you're going to hydrate your hair, kind of go ahead and hydrate the hair and kind of, hey, hey guys, how you guys doing? Hey doctor, kind of stay away from your scalp because you can cause burns to your scalp. You got an oil on it. It's just like using sunscreen. We're using sunscreen to protect our skin. You don't want to um necessarily put baby oil and go out in the sun you're gonna burn so the same thing can happen to your scalp so that's why i say hey talaya that's why i say kind of lay off some of the thicker oils if you're going to be out in the sun okay um so um i'll come back to a couple of things um as well with your um as far as it, when it goes to as um the sun but swimming is a big issue and I get a lot of questions on what should I do with my hair. I want to swim for the summer. Hey, Miss Frida. I want to swim for the summer and I want to know how to take care of my hair properly. Um, I have some before you go swimming and I have some after you go swimming care. Okay, tips. So before you go swimming, just kind of decide if you're going to use a swimming cap. Hey, Cousin Steven. Just decide if you um, are going to be one of those people who are going to wear a swimming cap. Um, for me, I, my, you see my hair, okay? I don't need a cap. <laughs> what am I capping? But um, yes, if you like to, okay, she said Bailey swims four days a week. Okay, I'm going to get to, I'm going to get to Bailey, okay? Um, but yeah, decide if you're going to wear a cap. A cap is not going to uh, protect your whole head. Uh, okay, she refuses to wear a cap. <laughs> but a cap is not going to protect your whole head. What it's going to do is it's probably just going to keep this part dry right around in here. It's going to keep maybe the center part dry. Um, around the edges, it's probably going to get wet. So you know that might happen. But it's going to keep, it should keep the majority part of your hair dry. So keeping your hair dry is a way of protecting it. So if you're going to get a cap, make sure you get a cap that's snug enough to fit and fit your head properly. Um, and um, nothing that's too tight that's going to cause headaches or you know migraines or nothing like that. But just snug enough that it's going to fit properly. We all have different um, thicknesses and uh, lengths of hair. So take that into consideration. Um, if you have a child that has a lot of hair, you might want to get an adult cap because if she has a lot of hair, she's going to need enough room to stuff her hair down into the cap. So just take that into consideration. Um, the next thing we would do is pre-wet your hair. Many people haven't heard of pre-wetting your hair, but all you are doing is maybe jumping in the shower. You're going to wet your hair. Yes. Wetting your hair is actually acting as a 
a cap. It's, it's a, it actually acts as a cap. So when you wet your hair, you're pre-wetting it, you're letting the little water molecules get inside of the little cuticle strands, and it's gonna actually help protect your hair. Now, it's not a um, full cap, or it's, it's not a, um, just like a, it's, it's not gonna be just a, a method that you would use, like, oh, I wet my hair and, and everything's gonna be, a fi be fine. It's not like that, but it's a way to kind of buffer the damage, if that makes sense. Okay, so I'm gonna give you an example. When you do get inside of chlorine water, um, your hair, if it's dry, it absorbs everything that is inside the water, that water. So all of the chemicals, all the chlorine, whatever it is else is in there, like the bleach or whatever, your hair is absorb absorbing it. Let me slow down because I'm talking really fast. I feel like I'm talking fast. But if you pre-wet your hair, you're letting the water molecules get inside your hair and kind of fill up and act as a buffer or a protectant for the cuticle strands. Right. You, 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 your, your hair won't absorb so much chlorine. Yeah, your hair's gonna absorb some, but it's not gonna absorb as much. Hey, cousin Tiana, how are you? So that is just a little trick that I learned a few years ago, um, pre-wet your hair. Something simple like that can actually help your hair um, from being so damaged for the summer, okay? Um, use a leave-in conditioner. So when you pre-wet your hair, you can go ahead and use your, uh, your uh, leave-in conditioner as well. That is good. Conditioners are really good. They act as um, buffers to damage and to chemicals. So use your leave-in conditioner. Um, braid, if possible. Uh, another thing I, I would just say, um, if you would like to put your hair up, put it up in a braid or, you know, maybe put two cornrows or if you want to wear braids or something like that, those are good things to do. Uh, before you go swimming okay and it's just something so when you go to detangle it it's not going to be so um, tangled and you're not adding extra stress on your hair so that's one of my methods to um, cause less damage to your hair before you go swimming okay um, do not use chemicals such as relaxers or bleach right before you go swimming so if you know that you're going to be going out, you're going swimming, um, this is not the time to try to get your hair done right before you're going to jump into chlorine because it can have an adverse reaction that you do not want to see. And um, <laughs> I'm going to give you some examples, um, especially to blondes, okay? Um, if you're deciding to bleach your hair, uh, you can leave the pool with green hair. It has happened. It's happened many a times to people and people have come to me to fix it. So I'm trying to uh, let you guys know what we can do to prevent it. It doesn't have to happen right away. So um, if you're going to bleach your hair, I would wait. Um, I think the proper uh, amount of time, maybe like 48 hours. I would say give it a week. That way is giving your cuticle some time to close up so they can seal up and lock out any unnecessary ingredients or chemicals that would absorb into your hair. And that's kind of what uh, chlorine does when it hits bleach. Chlorine is green already. So when it hits bleach, it is terrible on bleach blonde hair. It will cause breakage. It it can cause breakage. It can cause green hair. So be very, very protective. If you're blonde, one thing that I would do, the first thing I would do is pre-wet and use a leave-in conditioner. If not, a cap as well, okay? Um, relaxers, just because um, the sodium hydroxide in relaxers mixed with the chlorine can cause damage as well so just be careful if you have a relaxer already um, I would wait at least a week before I jump into a pool um, if not again use your cap or um, pre-wet as well 
I would definitely use a cap with a relaxer, um, having a relaxer or having bleached hair, okay? So that is, those are some of my tips to, that you could use before you go swimming. Just to have a few for after swimming and I'm not gonna hold you guys long today, I'm gonna wrap it up. But after swimming, make sure you are rinsing your hair. If you are someone like my sweet Bailey, um, she is, uh, I think my doctor says she goes swimming four times a week. Someone like her, if she's in swimming lessons right now, I would definitely make sure that I'm rinsing her hair after each swimming lesson. You don't have to necessarily wash the hair. And I say you don't have to necessarily wash it because you don't want to keep stripping and stripping and stripping the moisture away. Okay, washing your hair and rinsing it is two different things. So um, I, I wouldn't necessarily wash it. Maybe wash her hair once a week after she's done with her lesson. Um, clean it and you're going to wash it with clarifying shampoo. Okay, clarifying shampoo is a deep penetrating shampoo and it's going to get all of those unnecessary chemicals out of her hair. And we're gonna clarify just once a week when swimming, okay? Um, you're going to condition. When you do the clarifying shampoo, um, have her sit down, and we, we're still using Bailey as an example, but have her sit down and put her conditioner on, put her little shower cap on, and let her just sit or run around the house for about 30 minutes. Then you can rinse it, um, rinse her hair uh, dry with a conditioner, and you can throw on a little bit of leave-in conditioner and twist her hair up or braid it up, whichever you, you want to do, okay? Um, you also, if you're swimming, you also don't want to overstress your hair. So I say if you're in a swimming class or if you're taking swimming for the, for the um, summer, find a style that is going to be easy to maintain, nothing to where it's going to overly stress your hair. So if you're somebody who um, likes to flat iron their hair on a day-to-day -day basis or a weekly basis, which, whichever, uh, I would pick a different style. Um, I'm gonna get to your question in just a second. Um, but I would pick a different style, something that's gonna be easy that I don't have to put a lot of stress and fuss over my hair, if that makes sense. So if, if I'm flat ironing my hair, I would choose something different. I would not choose to flat iron it while I'm swimming because you're going to have to rinse your hair, wash your hair, condition it, flat, blow dry and flat iron. And you know, if you want your hair to look good, you're probably going to do that every day, which can cause more damage. Okay. You got the chlorine on top of doing extra stuff is the blow drying flat iron whatever and it's just going to cause more stress on your hair and it's going to break out break off and we don't want that okay so finding a easy style that um something that's going to be easy to maintain while swimming okay i like twists especially in little girls grown women twist uh braids keep it braided up something that where you're not putting a whole lot of fuss and stress over it okay um oh and so the question was she said can regular conditioner be used as a leave-in huh, okay it depends thanks dad how are you um it depends if you just have a regular moisturizing conditioner i don't mind leaving that in if you're going to rinse it out the next day okay so if you're going to rinse that regular regular leave-in conditioner out the next day then you can use that as a leave-in conditioner. If it's something that says, uh, gosh, what is that? Uh, that I'm um, thinking of a product. Okay, yeah. If it's a conditioner that says keratin-based or something that has um, some other chemicals that are not common, then no. Because if it has like something that with keratin in it or something that that um, is going to chemically, lightly chemi chemically alter the hair. Even the color safe conditioning, I wouldn't use that 
longer than the amount of time they say because you don't know what can happen you know to the hair I, I just I wouldn't trust it okay so um, if in doubt use your leave-in conditioner and nothing else okay <laughs> all right so the next thing I would say is to use a wide tooth comb um, make sure that you're you know not pulling and tugging tugging on your hair as much Anytime that your hair is introduced to chlorine, it's going to have a small reaction. So we just don't want to stress it out all the way. We want minimal, um, if any, we don't want any at all, but minimal damage. We, we want, you know, to keep everything nice and subtle. So I'm, I'm a big person who says, baby, your hair. I'm really, really, what I mean by that is take care of your hair. Don't, you know yank it out and you oh i'm not i'm not tender headed okay well your hair is tender so <laughs> we don't have to pull on it because it's not hurting us you might be hurting your hair okay um and one of the last things i wanted to say is um just be careful with your hair if you notice different changes to it if you if you notice that it's a little bit more dry after swimming, then you might want to boost up your conditioning treatments to twice a week, okay? Um, if you're noticing that you're not using the cap and your hair is really, really extra dry, you might wanna twist up your hair and go ahead and get you a cap. But what we, what we don't want is to waste away our hair the whole summer long and then, you know, back when school starts or back when we're in our regular routine, think that everything's just gonna flow properly. So, you know, we wanna take care of our hair or and you don't wanna bring those problems or issues to your hairstyles either, okay? Cause she doesn't wanna deal with it either. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. Um, but you don't want to overwhelm your hairstylist with, um, with neglect, that's what I'm saying. So that's why I'm giving you guys, you guys this great information. So you can kind of take heed and help help a sister out, okay? <laughs> but um, if you guys have any more questions or concerns about your hair during the summertime, you can always inbox me or email me or drop a comment below. Um, and again, you know, while you're in the sun, treat your hair as you would treat your skin okay we're not going to overly expose our skin to the sun and everything we don't want to overly expose our hair to um the heat and as well as the uh, chlorine water so we just want to protect our hair and our skin as well so i think that's all that i have today i will be back again with you guys next week and if you guys have topics for me let me know or things that you guys want to talk about please let me know i am totally open so thank you guys for watching talk to you guys later peace